What's up guys, Bonnie here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today I want to talk about these amazing tournaments. I say amazing because of the rewards, right? One of them is actually a new tournament, so we're going to go over that a little bit, what we might expect in the future from this type of tournament. But also I have a team for you guys, a Galen pack only team for the dragon farming in case you want to do that one as well also kind of like caution you guys on what you're going to decide to undertake because you can't spend your energy everywhere you're going to have to choose question is can you get all the good stuff right with just regular energy so let's get going with today's video So let's first start with the Tag Arena Tournament. This is the first of its kind. It has been relatively easy to complete. We got a Legendary Tome for almost free. I say almost free because I'm in goal three, relatively easy for me. If I get three wins across the board, it's 102 points, right? So this is fairly easy to do if you are in a higher tier. Question is, maybe you guys know this, I don't. Are you in a tournament that has players in the same tier as you are? If these guys are in silver one, bronze four, or whatever, obviously this is almost impossible for them, but much like the classic arena takedowns, I would assume it's a mixed bag, right? So we had a player push really early on. I, for myself, spent just kind of like the regular tokens per day, and I bought the extra first one every day which costs only 15 gems what will this ensure for me well if i finish in second place i will get relentless gear and a void shard on top of getting the legendary tome this is a fantastic deal but let me caution you right now they're probably never going to be like this ever again. Every time a new kind of tournament or event comes out for the first time, it tends to be very easy, right? The first of its kind is always very easy. Add to that the fact that we're on the beginning of the week, therefore you can lower your rating by quite a bit and you will face other one-man teams. I do the same thing. I put a one-man defense on my tag arena, therefore I can easily farm this, but also other players can easily farm me, so we're all getting easy points this is basically a gimme but again be cautious for the future you might not always see this the next one to talk about is the champion training tournament which was kind of really hyped from what i hear because there's some void shards apparently we've rarely seen void shards and it's kind of true if i look at the old champion training tournaments i say old about two months old right it's usually an epic tome right and for the first three winners it's always an epic tome and the first place is going to get six star relentless gear in this case it's kind of the same concept but instead the first place uh player is getting two void shards if we look at one that's a little bit more recent same concept here in fact the value is just slightly higher for the epic tome right so overall great because it's void shards well let's face it this is not easy to do in three days three or four days i forget but overall this is not really doable with free to play energy i had shown this before on my bge's guide spreadsheet so here's a quick summary of how that works and how i usually go about trying to figure out how many points i am going to need right so if we let's say look at make a one rank six champion starting from scratch you get quite a lot of points from simply ranking up your your rank threes and rank fours and also leveling them up right so right here is about 7,900 points just from this little section right here but the amount of energy required to do this is about 6.4 k energy not easy to do okay not doable with free to play stuff so if you have to spend some gems to get more energy or to just do more food overall, then is it a good deal, right? How many more gems are you going to spend to get those void shards? That's the question you have to ask yourself. You can also get away with using like mystery shards with brews, and then you kind of like feed the food into itself with the brews. You rank this up and you usually get about 528 points for this exact amount right here. Obviously spending silver, you can do this multiple times. So if you're kind of desperate, you don't have gems, but you have a lot of mystery brews and silver then perhaps you can do that to reach the last milestone but again overall i'm gonna say great but it might actually be easier for the dragon tournament because in here you can get a void shard for 2000 points and this is really good why is it really good because the last milestone is a lot lower than the usual dragon tournaments obviously it's a little bit harder to do i do get that but if you can afford to do this i would say prioritize this and then if you can go back to the champion training tournament and try to get or finish it get that extra void shard go for it but i'm gonna say that's a very long shot all right so here's another example of a previous dragon tournament same concept 3400 points all right so we're 
barely under this, which means that, again, if you have the team to do this, go for it, right? I've shown this before, but if you do Dragon 20, right? In this case, you do not want to do Dragon 24 or 25. You would rather be on a Dragon 20 because you get more tournament points per energy spent, okay? So the team that I'm going to present today might work for 24, but to be honest, I don't care. I want to spend it on the level 20, so I have a less energy required to get my Void Shard. So basically, if we look at this, it's going to be, I don't know, for 2,000 points, about 1,800 energy total. You can easily get that for free in two days, all right? So this is clearly doable as 100% free to play, again, assuming you have the team. But now let's go check out the team that I propose that you guys use, which obviously requires specific champions, right? So in this case, we have our AoE decrease defense from Zargala. We have buffs from our uh, Krila Witch Arm, buffs from Broadma. We have our dedicated Poisoner, which is a cold brawler to deal with the boss. And then we have our AoE Nuker, which is Seer. Again, I get this. If you want to do speed runs, Seer is kind of a must here. You might be able to get away with other teams, but I am using the same team I showcased uh, about seven months ago. And as you see right there, we're on the boss in 25 seconds. This is a particular run okay i got the reset of the skills off the refresh accessories on seer so it might not always be like this so this run will be really fast but it's usually about two minutes to two minutes and 30 seconds overall you can lose some champions in here so as long as your broadma is tough enough you can kind of come out of it but to be honest the second you're on the boss it's kind of all about the poisoner a cold brawler okay so it could be frozen banshee we just can't use her in this specific team so overall even though we're weak affinity on a cold brawler if you have enough survival survivability stats and you have lifesteal as you saw right there also with the trigger of his a2 no problem you can easily do this so again if you have these champions use this you're not doing this for the lifesteal gear you're literally just going for that extra void shard with free to play energy and then you can go back to the champion training tournament which should have uh what an extra day after this is done for you to try and complete it to reach the last milestone might be doable but overall this is going to be my strategy going forward i'd love to know what you guys plan on doing but as soon as this is over which is basically done right now we're gonna go check out the gear of these champions starting with krila witch arm which is built for my clan boss so i'm not gonna spend too much time on her i've showcased her many times before so these are the overall stats as uh, she deals more damage this obviously helps but in this case what i really want her for is for her extra buffs right i just want these extra buffs to have my seer be a little bit more powerful the allies joint attack is nice but to be honest it's kind of slowing down the run as well with all those extra animations and for the masteries this is what i'm running right here our next one is going to be uh our seer or one and only seer which is now in a savage set i also kind of just talked about her so here are the overall stats not easy to do i get it again this is very end game at least for my account all the skills are done and then for the masteries we do have flawless execution for the tier six next one is a broadma in a shield set i think he's a decent champion to put a shield set on 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 this guy uh and then for total stats a little bit faster than our seer uh can be faster than krila doesn't really matter so as long as you have krila broadma Zargala and then into Seer, you're good to go, right? So that's the proper tuning you would want to do. And uh, obviously, a little bit more speed or close to 200 or more will ensure you can lap the waves. So that is also a way to add a little bit more kind of like control. Overall, all the skills are done on this guy as well. And we have Fearsome Presence for the Tier 6. Uh, our next one is going to be the Occult Brawler, which is kind of like in a clan boss setup, right? He's not properly tuned right now. He's in fact kind of really slow, but um, it kind of works anyway. So I'm not going to put more effort into this. Right now, I only really use Occult Brawler for the uh, Faction War okay so all the skills are done on this guy and for the masteries we have war master for the tier six so there you have it guys my relatively fast galen packed only dragon 20 team in about two minutes and also quick recap here i would suggest you guys focus on the dragon tournament first if you need lifesteal gear great personally i don't it's all about the really valuable resources such as void shards so i want this right here i got all the ones from the tag arena because this is just kind of like a fluke it's a little bit too easy and then for the champion training event i mean i can try but like chances are i'm only at 3,000 points after like a day or two i am not going to reach top three and i'm certainly not going to reach the last milestone on in there but maybe you guys will decide to push for that and spend some gems do let me know what you think in the comments below thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you later